Hello. In this video I want to show how it's possible to analyze the strength of the Eiffel Tower. Here you see a model of the Eiffel Tower in SolidWorks. It's a quarter of the model. And you can also see the, the rest is the skeleton frame that I use to analyze its strength. And here I put a, a person and a car, just uh, small images of them, just to show the relative sizes. So uh, they, are, they don't have any detail, they're just there to indicate the size of the Eiffel Tower which is of course uh, very huge if you've ever been there you'll know that so here's the the contents that I want to show in this video I wrote a book a while ago on stress calculation and I created this video to show how you can put that knowledge into to use in normal life da daily life constructions so here's uh, the content of this video first I'm gonna show a rough estimation of the relevant dimensions then I'm gonna show where I got the the details on the material that is used in the Eiffel Tower and the weight and then I'm going to do a simplified calculation of the Eiffel Tower. Here's how I estimated di the dimensions. I, you see persons walking upstairs over there so I estimated that these beams would roughly have a dimension of one meter. As mentioned it's, a, it's all a rough calculation, reasonably quick and dirty so I didn't use the actual dimensions as they are in the Eiffel Tower. And here you can see I estimated the thickness of the material. I estimated that this would be roughly 15 millimeters. I found it quite hard on the internet to find the thickness of the plates that were used in the Eiffel Tower. So I expected that to be quite a lot easier. I searched for engineering drawings which look quite nice. But they don't have a, actually a high resolution. So I couldn't find the dimensions that I wanted to use over there. So that's why I used the pictures to roughly estimate it. Also on the internet I found that the total weight of the Eiffel Tower is 7.3 million kilograms. So I used that in the calculation. And here you can see that also on the internet you can find what material it was made of. It was made of iron, which is not as high quality as steel. But uh, steel was relatively new when the Eiffel Tower was built. So they, they used iron. And here you can see the yield stress of iron. It's roughly 80 to 100 newton per square millimeter as a yield stress of the material, and the, the break stress would be 350 newton per square millimeter. This is the skeleton that I used that I showed previously, and this is the real Eiffel Tower. And you can see the these round beams here. They're supported as well on the end. So I got a picture of that here. You, you can see these round beams. They are supported over here. So I figured. They probably uh, you take the load together with these straight beams that you can see on the end of it. So that's why I put this skeleton model together in SolidWorks because SolidWorks uh, on my computer couldn't uh, use all the beams of the whole model. I think uh, at this moment uh, the computers are not powerful enough to, to analyze the full model of all the beams all together. So I, I tried a little bit of that but it didn't work so then I resorted back to this uh, frame model. So I've got it over here. This is the frame model and I can show where I found it, where I where I downloaded it. First I searched on GrabCat for the Eiffel Tower, so I found this model. And it was not on the exact scale, it was just one meter tall, so then I blew it up with a scale factor. And I put that model on GrabCat as well, so you can find it over here. You can just download it for free once you register. You can see here's a person standing next to it. So this is the, the blown up model that I used. Then switch back to SOLIDWORKS then I've got the calculation model over here so then I just got rid of this uh, quarter model to be able to to analyze it and here you can see again the person on the car just for measurements and this is the frame model that I used for the for the analysis I'll go to the calculation now and I hide the symbols Okay, so I, I fixed the endpoints of the Eiffel Tower over there, and then when I analyze this, of course, I don't have all these cross members, which would be a problematic, of course, because uh, then you wouldn't get a very useful calculation, but I'm going to show how you can put it to use anyway. So I'll double click over here. I'm going to have to wait a little while. It's going to show the stresses due to axial and bending, as it says over here. So now this, this construction will bend quite a bit because these all these beams are not supported right now, which will cause quite a big moment in inside these beams, which will lead to high stresses. 
but you can see the, the the plot available already over there when I just look at the actual forces when I when I assume that all these cross members will take away the moments and will just put uh, compressive and tensile forces on the frame then it's a very good approximation of how the Eiffel Tower was probably calculated and also uh, how strong it actually is you can you can assume that because of all these extra beams the moments are avoided so here you can see that this would be bad uh, both the blue and the red values are now a problem because blue is less than 200 newton per square millimeter so it's a compressive force that is too big and red is a tensile force that is too big so red is tensile and blue is compressive but this is with the moments inside so if i now assume that all these cross members will take away the moments of the beams then i've got a very conservative calculation because the cross members will take away the moment but they'll also some add some extra strength to the construction so i've got that plot over here just activate it and you can see now already that the computer has a bit of difficulty with this model but if you put all the beams inside it would be a little bit too slow and now i can see that the, the compressive force here the the blue is the the biggest problem right now and usually a lot of people assume red is always a problem but it's not true in this case blue has a bigger value so it's a, a compressive force that is too big in this case it's over the 100 newton per square millimeter but that is not exactly a problem as you can see here that the beams that take the load they don't have the force divided evenly over all of the eight supporting beams so i think that would be quite a big of a problem when constructing a real life size eiffel tower so there must have been a problem when they were building it i think how to get the forces and stresses equal over all these eight members so that you uh, can have a very uh, well balanced construction uh, i think the cross members will help with that as well already but how to get exactly the same compressive force on these round beams as on the straight beams seems to be uh, that they've thought about that quite a bit when they were constructing the eiffel tower a while ago so when i assume they've they've constructed that correctly and i divide uh, i take the average of all the compressive forces on these eight these eight pillars I've done that already I get 42.5 newton per square millimeter uh, per beam so that's the compressive force in every every beam if they've constructed it correctly which I assume they've then they've done which is actually quite believable so then it is you would have a factor of safety the the loads can be twice as high and then you would read only the yield stress of iron and that's a uh, that's it's quite believable that you still have got a little bit of space for for example uh, the wind loads and then you've still got a factor of safety of two before it will start to yield and then it has to the load has to be three times higher even then to to actually get the material to break so i think it's uh, it's quite close to reality it must be quite close and i think when when this model when you assume is correct and of course it's not but it is just an estimation but when this is correct the total factor of safety before it would start to yield of the Eiffel Tower would be roughly two and then you also have this extra strength of the cross members so by that you can conclude that actually it's a it's a very strong tower it can very easily take its own load and and the wind load and for the rest I thought it was quite nice to to actually uh, be a little busy with this model i didn't have a lot of time so that's why i created the skeleton model but just by doing that actually i found it quite nice to to see how you could have actually analyzed it and before i've never actually noticed all these uh, these round constructions and these straight beams how they would exactly be fit together so by constructing this skeleton model uh, by uh, first downloading it from GrabCat and then analyzing which beams are the taking the, the largest load uh, I, I found it quite nice to analyze so it's a as mentioned before it's not a very scientific video as uh, most of you must have noticed already it's just an estimation but uh, I wanted to show how you can analyze a model like this quite simply and then use the the knowledge of axial and bending moments to to 
still make a, a reasonable estimation of how a construction would be analyzed in real life. So that's what I wanted to show in this video. Thanks for watching.